Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to work with an API that requires you to pass in an API key or serials for you to use their data, and then we shall store this data in our database, and then we shall retrieve this data and then showcase it on the front end. So it's going to be a three-part step, and I'm going to show you all of this, so I hope you can persevere through so that you can learn much more. So I'm on the New York Times developer API, which is open, and you can create your own account. So I've created my account, and I'm going to go ahead to make some apps. So the first requirement you will have is to make an app. I'll choose an app, I'll give it a name, I'm going to call it a YTWP, and then I'll say this is for my YouTube WP API development plugin. So this will be the name of my app and description, and I'm going to just choose something that's going to be from the books API. So I just want to get all the New York Times bestseller lists. Maybe I'm working on a website that is a bookstore. So I'll create this, and then I'm going to be given an app ID, then of course I'll have also a key that I'm going to have here. So I'm also given a secret that I can use, so I'll have this key, and I'll have this secret. So the first thing that I will do is go to my editor, open it up, and I'll go to my local site or one on the server, I'll open WP content, then I'll go to the plugin section, and I'm going to create a new folder which I'm going to call YTWP Books API. I'm going to just get this and drop it inside my editor. So after adding it in my editor, I'm going to create a new file that will start this, and then I'll add on dot PHP. Now inside here, I need to open this up with PHP because it's a plugin written in PHP, and I'll start up the things that are needed by WordPress to recognize that this is a plugin. So I'm going to add my name of my plugin, that YouTube WP Books API, and then I'll add of course my link, I'll add a name here, and then of course I'll say this plugin brings in the Books API the New York Times, and I'll give it a version of that, then I'll change this to GPL2 so that anyone can use it by just forking this, and then I'll just give this the same, I'll give it the same text domain as my plugin, because that's the standard of WordPress. So the first thing that I'll do is add little bit of security, and I'm going to look for the abs path, which is a constant that is defined in WordPress, so we are looking for this constant called uh, abs path, if it is defined, then we should proceed, if it's not, then we should die. So that's what we are saying, define the abs path or die, and after doing that, I'm going to save this, I'll go to the admin of my plugins, go to the plugins here, and on reload I'm going to activate this plugin, and once I activate it we don't have any issues, so meaning it is very very okay. So the first thing that I will do on getting my plugin here is I'm going to copy these details from the dev portal, I'm going to copy the app ID, because I'm going to look at the requirements of the API, and then I'll base on that, so we have the app ID, which I'll just comment out here, but we need it, then I'm going to also copy the key, and then I'll also get the secret, so I'll copy this, come back to my editor, and then I'll have the secret. So the reason I'm doing this is so that I don't have to keep on checking, already have all this information. I'll just save this as app id is equal to that, it's going to be a string, and then I'll change this key, it's equal to this as well, and then I'll have a secret, so a secret is equal to this string, add a semicolon, and 
I think we are good to go. So I've saved those, I can always use them uh, whenever I need them. So I'll come back here and we have our books API and we are ready to go. So when we go to get started, we register the key, get the API, and then we need to go to the APIs page and we'll just look at the books API. So I'll come to this page where I'm just getting the best sellers and I'm getting their history, or maybe it could be names depending on what I want, I'll click authorize, and then of course I'll need to enter my app here, and then I can also manually enter the key if I want to, so I'll add the key that we had already stored, so let me just copy it from here, copy this here, paste it, give this an authority, and say ok. So in here, just to try this API, I'm going to set an offset of 20, because that's the minimum you can set, so I'll click execute, and we'll come down here and we're going to see that we get a status of ok, and we get the different pieces of information down here. So I think this will be good for us to use. So let's go and try this inside our own page. So the first thing I'll do is add, I'm going to add an action here, and the action that I'll be looking to deal with is admin menu, and here we shall add our own function that will help us to run that, so I'll call this turkey press add menu page. And once I'm done with that, I can now start writing this function, so I'll say take a press, add menu page, of course I'll run the word function before it, and then I'll have our function coming in here. So in here I'm going to add, I want to run the add menu page function, and what it requires a title from us, so I'll add a page title, and the page title will be NY bestsellers, and then at the end put a comma, then we shall have a menu title which I am going to just duplicate, then we'll add a capability and I'll just say manage options, put a comma, I can always change this to administrator or any of the capabilities that are available in WordPress, and then what I'm going to do next is add a menu slug, and we can always just get our slug from here and just add it here to look like the plugin itself, then we need to add a callback function which we're going to say get books API, add a comma, then we need to add an icon URL, so I'll just use dash icons, or say dash icon book, and that's what I'll use, I'll use the book dash icon, and the position I'm going to use right now is, I'm going to be a bit intrusive and just say let me get to 16. So once I'm done with that, I'll just take these away, of course add a semicolon here, and then I'm going to get this callback function, and just write it as empty, get books API, I will do this, then I'll say all I need to do is echo and say hello, so that we can see what's happening, so I'll save this, I forgot a comma here, and that's the beauty of our editor, it's telling us that there's something wrong, so let me increase this so that you can see it. So I'll save this, come back into my admin area, and then I'll reload, and you'll see that we have a new NYT bestseller admin page right here, so click on this, and you'll see that we have our hello here. So the reason I can, I'm doing this is so that we can see our API call and the data we're getting before we actually throw it inside our database. So let me go back here and start working on that. So when we're going to use APIs, we use WP Remote, Get, Post, and these are default to WordPress. Now in here of course I'll need the URL which I am going to use, so I'm going to get that from our page, so I'll go back to the portal and pick this HTTP link, come back here and I'll add it right there, and then of course we're going to have some arguments that we shall need to pass, so I'm going to come and set up my args here, of course this is going to be an array of those arguments, and inside here is where we put our headers, we'll put in our body and all those things, so I'll say headers, of course I need to wrap this 
inside single quotes, and then I'll append an array of the headers, put a comma, we'll do the same for the body. Now let's go back to our documentation in the API and we'll see that it has a requirement for query parameters to be passed, and that simply means we're going to add a question mark to our API here, and we're going to pass in the different parameters that are here. For example, we have the offset, which should be a multiple of 20, you need to pay attention to some of those details. Now you'll notice that this API you can query by title, by publisher, by price, and so on, but I'm not going to look into those details. But what does it mean to use query parameters? So when we have our HTTP request, all we are going to do is add some question mark here at the end of the line, and we shall pass in those individual uh, queries. So let me come back here, and this is what I mean. So I'm going to change this to double quotes so that I can write more PHP inside here. So we're going to add a question mark, then we are going to have API dash key, which is the first requirement, and we'll say it is equal to, then I'll add our sign here and say it's equal to the key. Now of course the key is not available in this function, and I need to bring it down here, because it won't be accessed from here. So I'll cut it, bring it, and add it right here. Now after adding the key, we also have to add the offset, so I'll add and, then I'll type offset is equal to 20. Now once our URL is saved up, we're able to get a remote post and we can get that information, so I'll just call this our response from the API, and I'll save it inside a variable. Now depending on the API, some require us to pass in headers, like the content type, so you could pass in content dash type for example, your details like application slash json, because that's the way WordPress works, even if you don't add this content type, this remote get and remote post are always going to send out a content type of application slash json. Now of course some APIs require you to pass in maybe a username in here, a password, it could also be the API key or a json a JWT token, which is a JSON token, you could pass all those through the header, it could require you to have particular parameters inside your body to query the API, but this one in particular is saying we need to just pass query parameters on the URL. So what we're going to do here is I'm just going to dump our response. So I'll save this, go back to our admin area inside WordPress, and I'll reload this, I'll of course go to our New York's bestseller, and as this page opens, we get our API to be called, and you'll see that we get back proper information from here, we have a status of 200, which is okay, and then we have information coming from here. So let's strip that information, and then we shall use it down here, so what I'm going to do is come back here and say we want to get the WP remote underscore retrieve, and what we want to do is get the body, and the body will be from the response. Now this is a default WordPress function that helps you just get only the body that you get from the API, so once we do that we'll be able to get our body, so I'll save this inside a variable called body, and then I am also going to get our response code, and I can get that by using the WP remote retrieve, remote retrieve response code, and we can get it, and then also save it inside that particular variable. Now the reason I'm saving this is because I'm going to make an if function to say if we get the wrong response, let's say uh, we get a 401, then we'll know authorization hasn't been good, so if we get a 401, well, and it's equal to the response code, then we're going to pass in a message, we're going to return unauthorized access, 
we shall do another if statement and say if it is a 200, if it's not 200, just generally to, to say if we're not getting a proper status, we'll just say error in pinging API. Error in pinging API. So we always know what's going to happen. And then if it's 200, then that will definitely tell us that we're going to get back the body. So if it's 200, we don't need to do that if statement, we can just write everything here, but I'll just make it proper and say if it is 200, our response code, underscore code, then we're going to return the body that we have here, so we'll return body. It's just getting us whatever we needed from here. So this is a function get API books, get books API. Now what I'm going to do is open a new function that I'm going to call run all the code, because we're going to have a number of code functions doing different things. All the code functions, and it's the one we shall pass in here. Now of course I'll change the get books API to run under this function, and then I'm going to get this function and then add it here as our callback. So it will do the same thing, what we've just done is expanded this code so that we can do simple comments like get all the API books, and then here we're now going to start saying get the information stored in the database. So what are we going to do in the database? There are two ways of saving information in any WordPress database. One, you can use a transient, and if you have a lot of information that's unrelated and so on, you can actually open your own tables inside the WordPress database. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this first as an options. Now options are basically small pieces of data that are saved in the options table. So let me open up my server, I'll go to the database, I'll open this up, and opening it up you'll see that our WordPress database always has options in it, and we can create our own tables like what we have down here. So I'll go in the options and then you'll see that if we select the data, you'll see things like, like the site URL, which is usually the URL of your site, that's where it's stored. When you have a blog description or a blog name, those are things that are usually part of your customizer and they are accessed and they can be updated in those areas. Now I'm just going to go to the last sections, you'll see that we can have our own kind of settings. So what I'm going to do is come here and say if a particular options found, then we ignore, but if it is not available, then we are going to set it. So what, what we're going to say if get options, and that's how we get the options from the database, and we're going to pass in the options name and we're going to call it the YT WP books info, that's what we're going to call it for now. We're going to check if it is available, then all we're going to do is return, we're not going to do anything, okay? But if it is unavailable, then we should go and query our books API. Now that, I'm going to just move this down so that we actually have better code in our process. So we'll go to the API and we'll fetch that data, and after fetching it, so I'm going to save this as info, info books for now, I'll save it inside this particular variable, we are then going to add options, and when we add an option it expects an option which we are going to just pass as this same thing, so we'll get this option, because we always want to check it, if it's available, then we skip, if it's unavailable, then we have to save it. Then the value we're going to pass in here is this info books, and then all these other things can be ignored for now because we don't need them, and so let's try to run our code and see what happens. So I'm going to look for these options 
in our database, so I'll go here and look, do search, pass this in, press enter, and you'll see we don't have any rows like that. But what I'll do is that I'm going to hit our New York's bestseller, and we have an error here, get options, because this is supposed to be get option, not options. So get option, just like it is, add option. So I'll save this, and then of course, let me just put here a message, which is a print R, to say the option is missing. That's one way of us following up with our code. The option is missing, and then I'll do the same thing after that is done, after adding our option, and say the option is saved. So let's save this and see what happens in real time. I'll reload, in our database we'll see the option is missing, that was run, the option is saved. So let's go back here, hit enter, and you'll see that we actually have an error and it's telling us that there is an error in pinging API, meaning you've got an issue, so I'll go back to the code here and then I'll try to see where the problem is. Uh, we'll need to check the response, we'll look at the code, and we see that we have a typo here for WP dash. So I'm going to save this uh, after checking that error, come back and we're going to delete this option so that it's not there, and then we're going to hit our New York's bestseller, we can var dump the response, and then we have response code, and I think that is a problem in itself, so I need to just copy this, and then change this response code, so that we have it all being uniform. Now once this is done, we go back into our database, I'll click edit, delete this, come back to admin, reload, and you'll see that option is missing, we've had dump, we have all the information coming in, and we have option is saved. So let's come back into our database to look at this, and you'll see that when we click edit, we have this whole chunk of information showing up in here. Now this is in our database, and we don't need to call the server over and over and over again. Imagining if a server has a limit on how many times you can call that API, and let's say if the data is not changing every other minute, then you don't need to call out that information. So this will allow your website or your application to be a lot faster. So this is one way. Now, there are other ways you can save this information by creating another database. So what I'm going to do is, let me just come back here, and I'll remove some of these, which we don't need. Now, the other way of doing it is by saving a custom table inside our database, and we're going to look at that, but as we look at that, let me see the kind of information we have, and what kind of tables we can actually just create. So let me go in here, instead of returning first, I'm just going to get that option, I'm going to get this option, copy it here, and then what I'm going to do is do a vadam. So I have a small, a small snippet that allows me to just have pre-tags. So I'm just going to vadam this so that we can see the information that's in there. Now the other thing that I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to JSON decode this information because it is in JSON format. So I'll save this, let's come back and view our object. So I'll come back here, and I reload, we'll now see that we have an object which has a status of OK, so we can just pull out the OK, we can pull out the copyright, we can pull out the number results, which is this, and then we have results, and that results has an array of 20 pieces of information. So let me come back here, and then I'll save this as our results. So results will equal to JSON decode this, and I'm going to just look for the results. So I'll save it up here. 
So what I'm doing is getting a variable of results, I'm getting the JSON decode of this get option, and I'm just getting the results. And then what I'm going to do here is var dump this, save, come back here, reload, and you will see we get our object of 20 pieces, and inside this we have individual objects again. So we can just pick off the title, the description, the contributor, the author, a contributor note, a price, and all of this. So these are the things that we can probably look for and then just add them inside our database. So I'll get these few pieces and these are the things that I'm going to create inside our database. So I'll take note of this and say our tables should have these few things, a title, a description, contributor, author, contributor note, I'll just go for the minimums, I'll go for price, I'll get the age group, I don't need to do that, so let me just get the publisher. So few things, we know these are the lengths, and we can be able to also limit our database that we shall be creating with these short things all through. So let me comment this out because it will cause errors, and here we're going to run a function which is going to say create create database table, and then we shall save this. So instead of saving an option this other time around, we're going to create a database table, and after creating our database table which has all this information, we are going to save the information. So I'll save database table information. So that will be the next step that we'll do. So for now let's just create a database table and we're going to use this information. So I'll copy this, remove this so that it remains clean, and I'll come down here at the bottom and then I'll create our function which is create database table. Now of course I could have created the database table at the initialization of the plugin, those are the improvements you can make, but I'm not going to do that right now, I'm just going to make this all raw code and it can be later improved in terms of its development. I'm just prototyping this for you, but you can always write it in a better way. So let's create a table here. Now I'm going to version our table so that in the future if we want to add other things, we can always check for the table version and then create the different structures of the table. So what I'll do here is say the YT WP table version, and I'll say this version is going to be 1.0, so we'll call it 1.0 for now, and that will be all that we need. And then of course we are going to add an option in our database because we shall be using this particular version to cross check if that is the right version. So I'm just going to copy what we've used here before, saving that transient, so I'll come here, save this as an options, and then I'm going to get this WP table version, I'll say that is so, and then I'll paste this. So we'll have an option of a table version, and we'll always cross check to see if we have this table version, then we don't need to create another table but if it's not existing then we have to create the table and then add the different fields in that particular table. So I'm looking at this documentation for creating tables on the WordPress repo, and that can help. So we're going to look for the global WPDB, and this is basically the WordPress class inside the core WordPress. This is available for us to always create tables and manipulate them in different ways. And if I scroll down I'll be able to see all the sample code here, so I'm going to first declare a global, so we'll come back here and declare a global, which is the YT table version that we have, and we'll of course pass in this for now, and then the next thing we are going to do is we'll also call the WP DB, which is the class of WordPress, and this particular class allows us to manipulate our WordPress database, adding tables, 
and just basically do so many things. So we shall call this global so that we can use it as we create our table. The next thing we shall do is actually get a table name and you'll see that now we are starting to use this global that we made and we're going to add a prefix to our table and the table that we shall be having we shall just give it this particular name so that we know what we are working with. If our prefix of our database is WP or depending on what you've set it to be we'll have WP underscore then we shall have this extension right there. So once we've declared our prefix for our table name we are now going to add the things that create our table. So let me just copy this code, I'll come back here, place it, then I'll explain what's going on. Now we'll also need to set our character set collet inside our table and the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create an SQL statement which is going to basically create a table and that table will have the name that we have declared here and inside it we will create an ID of a minimum integer, a medium integer which is 9, it should not be null and it should always auto increment on its own. Of course we can now set the time if we want to, then we can bring in all our other information that we wanted to have from here. So we want to have a title and this title always has a length of 9, so I'll duplicate this, this right here, I'll say name is now going to become title and the title will be a tiny text, a title text and we can always say this is going to be 39 or whatever it is and it will not be null and then we're going to have next down here we shall need to have a description, so we'll add a description, our description here the size was 116, so we can always just add this as a text and then we'll have it as 116, and the reason we are doing that is so that we don't have a very large database, okay? So I've actually taken away my title, I need to have this as title, so we'll have our title here which is a text and it will be 39, we'll have a description which is a text, we'll give it 116, and then we are going to have a contributor which will be a string, a string of about 11, so I'll duplicate this and bring this down, so the contributor I can always just add as 20 and then next we'll have an author and I'll do the same thing, author just like contributor, I'll leave it at 20 depending on their name, then we'll have a price which will basically be taking in an integer, so I'll duplicate this have the price and then I'll say this is going to be an integer of 20 and then we'll have a publisher finally who will be of about 7, so I'll duplicate this, have a publisher, I'll change this to text, leave it at 20 and then I'll take out all these other pieces that we don't need. And finally what I'm going to do is just leave a primary key of the ID so that we have this ID as our primary key when we are checking the tables. But I also notice my SQL has an error here, so I'm going to change this to book description so that it doesn't break. The word description is retained in SQL, so we cannot use it here, so we'll have to change this to book description. Now once we have our SQL done here, all we need to do is require for this file that is part of WordPress and it's the includes upgrade PHP file and that will allow us to use the DB Delta and pass in our SQL to create that table. So I'm going to save this, now that we've finished creating all this code for making our database table, I'm going to save this, I'll take away this so that my code is a lot cleaner, save, then I'm going to come back and run it. So I'll go back to the backend, click this to reload, of course I'll first take out this because it's going to stop our code from running, come back to the New York bestsellers, click it, it will allow the reload to run 
and then what I'm going to do is of course I'm going to come back to our table here, and then we'll scroll down, and you'll see that at the bottom of the database we have this table called WPYT, WP table version. Just like what we had inside our code, we had the prefix, then we added on or concatenated this extra string. So we have it in here, and then you'll see that we have all the different columns that we initially assigned. So let's populate our information inside the individual columns that we have here. So I'm going to come back to our code right here, and I'm going to start on the save database info, so I'm going to copy this and I'll pass it in here, and of course I'm going to then add of course the closing and opening brackets here. Now of course we don't want to create our database every other time we run the code, so I'm going to just look for this option, and if this option exists then we just skip the whole thing of creating tables, so I'm going to do an if statement, what I'll do is I'll pass in this create table, and what I'll do here is I'll say get option, and we're going to check if this option is actually true, then we ignore the whole create table. So if this is false, meaning if we do not have this version then we create the table, but if we do then we just skip that, we just go and actually save our database. So I'll also make some changes here, it's always good to fail really fast, but uh, for this tutorial I'm going to change this and say if it is false, then we should query the API, add this option, and then move on with life. So I'm just going to move this up here, and I'll say if it is false, then we should get the books from the API, add this option, and then return. Otherwise if it is not false, meaning that if this is actually already existing, we should get the options results and then pass it as a variable inside the results. So I'm saving this option temporarily as our information, but what I want to do is get this and then save it in our database. So I'm just going to get this code, cut it from here, and then we shall use it in our save info to database. I'll move this comment out and say get info, stored in database so that we know what's going on in this function. So since we already have our results here, they're being decoded and we're getting results, let me just var dump this, let me pre var dump this and then I will see what's next, so copy this, paste it here, and then I'm going to come back and reload, and you'll see that we have this object with 20 items, so I'm going to th loop through each item, and then I'm going to pick these particular pieces, and then I'm just going to send them over inside the database rows. So all I need to do here is go for each, go for each, for each of the result as result, I'm going to pick from each result something and then enter it inside the database. So I'm going to just check this, and then I'm going to pick of course the title and all of this publisher, I'll paste it here so that I can just reuse it quickly. So we're going to be getting the title, remember this is description, we have contributor, we have author, we have the price, and then we have the publisher, and of course these are going to be gotten from each of the results, so I'll copy this, and then I'm going to go to each one of these, go to the beginning, put our arrow and say we want the result, we want to get the title, we want to get the description, we want to get the contributor, author, price, and publisher. Now how do we send this information inside the database? So we have to get the particular table, and then insert in the particular columns. We shall go back to this page, and you'll see that they give us a global WPDB, and they share with us how we can enter this information, so I'll copy it, and I'll share with you what happens. 
So I'll first paste it here. So we need to get our global of the DB class and we're going to already be getting the information, so we don't need that. We're going to get our table name, so I'll just copy this table name from here and paste it here. And I'm going to say for each of the results we're going to do a WPDB insert and we're going to insert it in the table name and we're going to insert in the different arrays. So I'll cut this and I'm going to put it inside here in our loop. So I'll cut all these pieces from here and then I'm going to add them to the array that is existing here. So I will do this, we'll leave the time alone because we want to get the exact time. I'll push this here, I'll get all of this, then go to the end, then just use my editor to my advantage, and then I'll paste all of this here. So I don't need to have these commas right here, so I'll clean that up, have this, also need to do that, save this, and we know that we're going to be inserting inside our database. So what I'm going to do is just come back here, then I'll run that, we'll see that we have some errors in the database, it's saying it doesn't know a description in the list, so this is because this is supposed to be book description. So I'll save this, thankfully I have Query Monitor, which is a plugin that helps me check for errors when I'm developing. I'll reload, and this time around everything went well, so I'll come back here, reload this, I'll select to see data, and you'll see at the different intervals we had this information entered. So I'll come back here, reload this again, twice, and you'll see that this information is being entered all over again and again and again. You can write a small script to check for the title, the contributor, author, and publisher that if those exist in your rows of your data here, then you should skip writing that particular piece of information, and that code can always go right here. So that will make your code a little bit cleaner, but I'm not going to go into that, I just wanted to show you how you can save in your database. Now finally, we are going to query that information. The way we queried our get option, we can get that information and put it on the front end. So equally we can get our information from the database and show it on the front end much much easily. What do I mean by that? I'm going to go into my themes folder, I'm going to WP content, I'll go into my theme, and right now I have 2020 as my theme. In 2020 I'm actually going to create a new template for my page. and I'll call it page db info. So I'll add a PHP here at the end, and of course I'm going to start with PHP to kick it off. Now to make it work as a template, we need to add a comment here and say template name, and we shall say this is called db info. And I'll save this, and I'll come back inside my admin area to a page, I'll reload this, sample page, and when we come to template here you will see that you have the option of db info. So I'll update this, and if we go to view the page, we're going to see that we have nothing added here. So inside this page we're going to query some information and make sure that we get that information. So first of all I'm going to add our header, so I'll add get header, add a semicolon and I'll also get our footer, and I'm just going to look at the other pages so that I get a better idea of what's happening. So for example we have the index page and it has all of this running, I'll look at the full width template, and it just has a get part singular, if I look at the template cover, 
you'll see that it has all these different things. So I'm just going to copy this and add it to my DB info. I'll add it to my DB info and then we're just going to have our PHP running right here. So we shall query our database and always store this information on the page, irregardless of how it looks. We're just going to pick it and throw it on the front end. So one way we could do that is by, I'm going to just do a print R, and in here we can do a get options, get option, and we can pass in our option that we already got. So I'll get books info here, and then I'll pass it in and save. So if I come back here and reload, you'll see that we have our header, we have our footer, and you can actually see our information here. Our footer is broken here because we do not open PHP again, so we just have it echoing get footer. So I'll save this, I'll reload, you'll see that now we have our footer, but you can get this information and run it through maybe a table or whatever you want to have it do, that is one way. The other way of just not getting the option, because we saved our information in the database, is we have to query the database to get this information on the front end. What I'll do first is I'm going to throw this information in a table, so I'm going to have to open up markup for a table, of course close it at the end of the day, and then I'll add a table row here, and inside that table row I'm going to add a number row, TDs, and what I'll do is let me just copy what we have here, I'm going to come and paste it here, then I'll use my editor to help me set that up real quick. So I don't need the time, we have a book description, title, book description, author. So let me do this quickly with my editor. I'll take that off and then I'll close off the TD, come to the beginning and open up the TD. So I have title, book, contributor, author, price and publisher already here. So I'm going to do the same thing for all my PHP that will be coming. So I'll take out the time as well, I'll take that out and then we'll use that as a template for what we are going to do. Now inside this PHP we are going to query our database directly. Now there are two things, one is us querying the options that had been set, so that one is really easy, all we need to do is just say get option right here, come back to this page and look for this option that we saved, which was get the books info, so I'll copy this and then I'll add it in here. And all we need to do is be able to look through and get that information, so let me just print R to show you the possibilities of this. So I'll print R, hit save, let me comment out this table so that it's not broken, save this, come back to our front here, we're going to go to our front page, we're going to reload, and once we reload you'll see that we have all this data showing up right here. But that's not the main goal, I want to go into my database table and pick the same information. So I'm going to come back here, I'll undo the tables that had commented out, so the first thing that I'll need to do is use the global WPDB which is available for us, and after getting the WPDB we are going to use a method that is part of that class and it's called get results. that's the method we shall be using. Now in here we're going to add our SQL query, because we're going to query directly from the database, I'll start at my SQL variable here, double quotes, and then I'll come back, I'll add select all the rows from, and we need to add the table name, so I'll have to add table name. Now this table name, I'm just going to copy what I have used before, so we'll have a table name is equal to, I'll come back here and I'm just going to look for this 
this that we have here, and then I'll add it. Of course we are saying get the prefix, then get this particular table where we save that information, so we'll save that in ISQL, and so I'm going to be getting the results right here. So I'll save this also in its own variable and call it table underscore info. And the reason I'm saving it in a variable is because I want to look through it. So why would I look through it? Let me just print R for you so that you see what's in this. We'll get the table info, I'll save this, come back here, reload, and you'll see that we have an object with all this information right through here. And if I was to echo some pre-tags, you'll see that we have an ID, time, title, book description, contributor, author, and all of this. So we're going to be looping through each one of these and throwing them inside a table. So I'll come back here, so now we're going to do a for each statement, and in this for each we're going to loop through the table info. So you need to get table info, add it here, and then I'll say get the table info as info row. And so for each info row we are going to get a different piece of information. So let me clean this up here, I'll paste this down here, I'm going to select this all, go to the end, take away that little bit, close off my TD, and then of course this will be in PHP, so I need to close off my PHP, and then I'm going to go to the very end, and then I'm going to write info underscore row, then we'll add our arrow to point to each one of those, and then of course I have to open PHP for each one of these, for it to work, and I will echo. So I just need to also put something at the beginning for each one of these, so I need to have a TD here that will wrap that information around, so in here I need to escape PHP, and then I need to open PHP again here, so that my code does not break, so I'm going to save this, let's come back and see our complete table. So I'll come back, reload, and you're going to see that we have a title, book description, contributor, author, and so on, and we have a problem here, because I've not done this properly. I missed one important aspect that for each of those I need to add a table row and close it off. So that's why our markup looks funny, so I'll save that, come back, reload, and when I reload here you'll actually see that we have our title, we have a book description, we have a contributor, we have our author, price, and publisher, all of them in the way that we should be having them. And this is how we handle calling information from our database onto our front end, just like in any other database driven website. So if you enjoyed this, please let me know in the comments what you're going to use this for, or any challenges that you get, let me know in the comments so that I can share back with you and also learn from you. If you want to put this in a short code, I have a video that I've linked inside this video description, and you can see how to write your own short code so that you can use this either on a page or in a widget. Otherwise, thank you for watching and enjoy your day!